welcome to the Chuck Shoe Podcast. My guest today, Donnie V, solo artist and uh, former singer of Enough's Zenith. Uh, he has a couple new songs out right now. Uh, a solo song called All My Favorite Things and a new song with Enough's Enough called Strangers in My Head. Both great songs. Um, the Strangers in My Head actually gets in my head, no pun, pun intended there, but um, this is actually the second time I've had Donnie on my show. If you haven't already, check out our first interview. It's episode number five of my podcast, one of my most popular episodes. Uh, he had some really good stories in that one. And we went over a lot of the history of Enough's Enough and some defining moments for him, like his near-death experience and all this crazy stuff. So this time, you know, we kind of were all over the place. Uh, Donnie likes to kind of go off on these tangents, and I let him because it's interesting stuff. Like he's talking about things with the music business and royalties. He's talking about his partnership with Chip from Enough's Enough. Um, and he's talking about the pandemic and masks, all sorts of great stuff in this interview. And I think you'll enjoy it. Hello. Donnie. Hey. Hi, you ready? Yeah. How sure. you doing? Pretty good for my age. How about yourself? Good, good. Not too bad at all. So, yeah, I was just wondering how you're you're holding up. Like, what's your mindset uh, during this pandemic, because you've been through hell with your near-death experience and your pancreas liquefying and all this stuff. So, um, <laughs> my thought is that either you're thinking, "Well, I've been through so much, so this isn't going to kill me," or you're thinking you're fragile and you need to, you know, really quarantine real good. I personally not even thinking about it. <laughs> I really I, that just doesn't. Uh, I just don't even think about it. It's I was just exposed to it. I found out a few days after I was, um, like real close to it. I went up and and uh, sat in with a band for for two songs, and um, then I found out two days later that the one guy, uh, the guitar player, was uh, got sick as fuck, had the coronavirus, and I was like, oh no, you know, wow. but n- nothing, nothing happened. Oh, okay. that's fine. I'm fine. I'm a tank. <laughs> that's yeah. That's my thought. Like you're almost like you. F- you got to feel like indestructible after everything you've been through. Yeah, just, unless I'm walking in uh, Home Depot or the grocery store or something and having to put the mask on, I, I don't even usually. I usually forget to bring even bring one. I forget that it's even even happening. You know what I mean? Do you just spend a lot of time at home, anyways? Um. Yeah, I'd say. I'd say, yeah, because that's most everything I do is, you know, out of my little studio or, you know, I'm either that or, you know, out going out to get something or, you know, this and that on my bike. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, I don't really, I quit going out to, I've never been really one that would just go out to go out and hang at clubs or anything like that. You know what I mean? It's at one point it was, it was too uh, chaotic when I would. And then, and then at another point, um, I was just find myself going out all scraggly looking for drugs or something. So wasn't really a wasn't really something I ever really did, you know. And mm-hmm. and so it's like you know, I mean, at, at my schedule or routine is basically isn't even interrupted whatsoever. I just do mm-hmm. my thing, and I'm not, I don't worry about it. When it's your time, it's your time, no matter what you're doing. Yeah. And now, so speaking of the drugs, are you are you are you having difficulty or temptation at all to stay sober? Because that's got this got to be the biggest test for. I mean, I'm seeing so many people that are falling off the wagon with all the crazy stuff going on in the world. Or is it is this? Oh man, I just got right back on all of it. I said, "Fuck it, man! I'm, like, <laughs> I'm high, high as fucking hell right now, man. I'm on everything." <laughs> oh. No, man, I have no problem with it. It doesn't even occur to me. You know, I can. I could be around it or whatever the hell. I mean, I, I used to be able to, used to be able to spot the signals. Like if you could tell if somebody was yeah. oh, that guy over there, that guy over there, I think he's high or something. If you're looking for something, you could, I could find it on the moon. Yeah. I'm looking for it. You know what I mean? But I don't even, it's not even in my mind anymore. So That's and, great. Uh, that was the only way that, that it was ever going to happen for me anyway, was if, I just truly got sick of it and which I did, you know, mm-hmm. I just, it just like wasn't doing anything good, you know, for me. It didn't make me feel good. Nothing like that. It's like, what the fuck am I even doing anymore? You know what I mean? So that's just, I just not cut it out, you know, and then, and never look back. It's not even an issue. 
Yeah. So, like, what is your living situation? Are you still living with your sister? Or I, I thought I heard something about like a teenage girl. No. Or who is who are you living with? Then? Teenage, teenage girl. There is a teenage girl that lives here. Yeah, yeah. I live with. I have a a wonderful little uh, little family situation here. You know, I uh, live with this uh, one chick named Diana. And okay. She has two. She was just going through a through a messy divorce. She's still not over, but um, and uh. Just met her through a uh, through getting my hair. She does hair. Oh, okay. Getting my hair done and just met her, and we just we've been inseparable since. And uh, it's not, I you know, I don't even know what to call the relationship. It's not your standard uh, boyfriend girlfriend relationship. It's it's uh, it's you know, it's strange. It's well, anything with me is strange, you know. <laughs> but the, the 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 boy is he's twenty, and the girl just turned eighteen. Her daughter and. And I love them and they love me. And, and it's like, it's a really nice, nice little situation. I live, you know, I live in a, in a really nice house. I, and we just finished uh, my new studio and it's nice. like a big room, big bedroom with the studio and, and it's fucking awesome. And it's, you know, it's like all I fucking needed and all I ever wanted. And, and I'm happy as fuck. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great to hear. Well, so, and then also I heard, um, in terms of the music stuff, in terms of the business side of things, you, you now have a new management and, and legal and who else is part of your team? Like who's help, uh, helping you with all this music stuff. Cause it sounds like I, it takes a team to be, to run music. Now it's not just, you can't do everything. There's so much to do. Oh, I can't do anything. <laughs> it's no, <laughs> well, you it's, can uh, write and play. Yeah. But I mean, you know what? I've, I've always been able to do that. I've just always came up short on anything other than that, you know, but, um, I, I have no problem doing the work. You know what I mean? It's just, it's mm -hmm. just, uh, some guys are really, really good at like, like my former partner, he's great at fucking hustling shit up and hustling and like a used car salesman. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not like that. I'm not like that at all. And it's a shame because I mean, if, if I would ever put the, the work ethics into what I do as I did into like looking for drugs, <laughs> stuff like that you know what i mean yeah i would fucking i'd be a billionaire you know but uh but uh yeah it's it's a team now it's um i just got really lucky there's uh like there's a select group of fans that has come together with me and and we're like a little group and um and we get things done and um you know like and michael he's just recently come on board a little bit more in, in a in a stronger fashion to uh help with social media and stuff like that because you really need you need one guy I got a manager now it's uh his name is aaron duke he, t he goes and takes care of like the the business end of things and um you know like all these little issues that that i'm needing to get this clusterfuck on you know resolved and and, and uh untangled because uh i mean just with my old work ethics and plus trusting everybody and, and just not paying much attention to anything except the songwriting and the singing. And, uh, you know, that's cause that's all I fucking ever gave a fuck about. Mm -hmm. still, that's really all I give a fuck about except that songs don't necessarily pay the bills. Right. But, um, but, um, yeah, there's like, I gotta get, I got a lot of legal shit that, that needs to be attended to all every single label that I've ever been with still not one of them on all those records I put out has ever given me one dime of record sales residuals yeah. or anything like that. I'm, I'm confused that about case. that. Yeah, me too. So, so, uh, you know, like I said, I got, you know, my manager is now trying to unravel that and find the money and, and cause mm. there is money. Yeah. It just hasn't, hasn't gone to me, you know, and so yeah. I'm, and uh, I was my angle with my approach was starting to be that I'll just start taking stuff and releasing it and see who comes out of the woodwork to go after me. Then mm. that's the person that that's the ones I need to go after. You know what I mean? Mm. Flush, flush themselves out. But I guess that wasn't a great strategy because nobody knows or gives a fuck about me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I was just going going after some things, and you know, my manager he takes care of that kind of shit. And legal, I got a, uh, I got a couple of, uh, you know, it, there's a lot of fans throughout my my career and a lot of through through my life who have who have told me, you know, that 
that songs and stuff that I've done has, has literally, they couldn't have gotten through their lives or something, I, which I can never understand. I mean, how mm. could a song or an artist uh, record or something get you through, you know, make you not kill yourself or something like that. But I guess it's, I guess it's possible because so many tell me that and, um, and, uh, you know, and, and then I, I kind of have to credit it to the, to that, uh, the whole thing I credit it to, I guess that, that I had a purpose here. Oh yeah. I have a purpose sure. here on, on this planet and, and it's not necessarily self-serving, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. but you can't put a price tag on somebody telling you that, dude, I was getting ready to end it all this day. And, and, and something you said or sang or this and that made change my mind. And here I am like 10, 20 years later and stuff like that. Well, some of these, you know, turn out to be luckily for me a, a, a an attorney or something like that, you know? And so, <laughs> oh, so, so now you, there come you your know, aid to help you with this stuff. Yeah. I wish, I wish a lot more would because, uh, because I mean, there is, there is some, uh, there's some issues that are really, uh, yeah, so you know, so, I, I'm really being violated yeah, in a you, lot of ways. You never got uh, royalties for the CD or the music sales, and then, but you also had some soundtrack work. You did a song on Jerry Maguire, and then you said mu- music and movie trailers. Um, and what about like when your songs played on Sirius XM? Because I, I know that I've heard from comedians that they get that's a pretty lucrative deal. The comedians say one of them I had Liz Mealy on. She said that the money from uh, satellite radio pays her rent. She lives in New York, so that's got to be pretty. Yeah, so you're yeah. not getting any of the money from Sirius. Yeah, that, that that yeah that I get the money. Oh, like, okay. Like there's companies that uh, like ASCAP or BMI or something like that. Those what those do is 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 you know trace your airplay and you get oh. paid a residual on airplay and well, so does the nice. uh, so do the companies for uh for the you know the satellite radio they have those too and yeah they're seen as how obviously there really is is radio is pretty much non-existent anymore you know what i mean and um so that this this stuff is i've you know I've, I'm, I'm being paid on i get you know i get royalty checks for for stuff like that, but, but not, not even close to, uh, all of my songs, are they all, uh, registered mm. or anything with that? And so that's, that's another thing that trying to get it together. And, and, you know, I've just let a lot go by. And, and when you, when you operate that way, everybody, even some people that you think are the closest to, to you are just slowly eating it all up and taking everything. And, and before you know it, you're standing in a position like, what the fuck, you know, and, and legally you don't have a leg to stand on in, in some situations. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's crazy fucking shit, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, but, but I do get, uh, I do get royalties for when something is played on uh satellite radio. I still get it. That's ASCAP, ASCAP checks, but those aren't, those are never much unless you have a, a current hit single, oh. you know, and like, when we did have like fly Michelle or new thing or something like that, there were actually, you know, heavy, heavy rotation, heavy airplay and stuff. There was, there was some uh, decent money coming in, but there was, once again, there was uh, some bullshit went on at that time, it, along with every other aspect of my life and where somebody had gone and uh, just to, to muck things up, had filed a uh, conflicting, uh, you know, filed for the song in a conflicting manner that it needed to be settled by litigators. And then that just kind of got uh, lost in the, in the shuffle for so long. And so like all the money for a new thing, I mean, red, red, you know, radio residuals or MTV or all that play and stuff like that all got kept and was supposedly sit, sitting in a, in escrow, you know, hmm. waiting for it to be this, you know, waiting for the dispute to be solved. And once we finally did get to that point, you know, because attorneys cost a lot of money. Yeah. And oh. and, and the, ends, the ends have to justify the means when you're going to do something, you know, and, and when a lot of it is just principle and principle, you know, it's a lot of attorneys aren't, don't take principle as a payment. Yeah. And um, so, by the time you finally get in a position where you can start to address this shit, then they have 
this, well, we don't have all those records. We can't trace that stuff anymore and all this and that. And so you get fucked out of, you know, fucked out of, uh, you know, probably we're talking six figures, Jeez. you know, yeah. and, you know, there's, there's easily six figures in amounts out there that are sitting there that with my name on them, or at least it should be paid to me. But, uh, hopefully, um, hopefully we'll get, we'll start to get this stuff ironed out and, and yeah. you know, get me paid. But yeah, that, I basically do, do this all for love. For sure. <laughs> so that going back to that song, I, I just heard this the other day. I was listening to an interview, um, that song, new thing. It's one of your biggest hits, obviously. Um, I didn't know that the, the way you came up with that song was, it was the sound that your car made when you started it, it became the opening yeah. riff. That's amazing. Cause when I listen to it, it does sound like that kind of like, Da-na-na-na. like that's really well, that's, interesting. Uh, see, a lot of the true stories behind a lot of that stuff got, got so buried under the, under the carpet that, um, you know, with all of the, the facade and everything that was created, you know, like the, brothers and baseball and all this and that shit just um you know got just you know when rumor becomes fact and and eventually you forget to even tell the real stories and, and now you know that i'm more clear-headed and stuff when when i think about certain things like like that song for for example i remember you know i can remember i can visualize and see myself sitting there i was late for something and i just got done working with my grandfather and um, I go to get in my beater piece of shit car, and it's like ra 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 and I was like, <laughs> and it did that a bunch of times, and I I can hear, I'm sure everybody can, like if you're standing in the shower or something, you hear you can hear sort of music in the in the water in the and uh, and so I hear it, and and when it comes to me, I hear it in everything. You know what I mean? And so, um, so, you know, I, obviously I heard it in that and, and just immediately saw the riff. He just had to pick up a guitar and, uh, figure what, you know, what the best chords to suit that was, but it, it, it basically, it, it, it presented itself and, um, then it just, you know, turned it into a song, then brought it, brought it by chips and, and he slapped his name on it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. like so many others yeah well you guys had such a great um you know that great run in the 80s and 90s where you, and you did a lot of touring with uh, a lot of big bands like do you do you do you remember a lot of those times like with uh some of my favorite bands like poison warrant quiet riot firehouse def leppard damn yankees LA yeah bands? yeah i can remember a lot more than people think that i remember you know because uh <laughs> The way people talk about me or, or talk to me and stuff, it's always like, you were so out of it. And you know, you were so fucked up. I said, that's not true. That's not fucking true. I remember every, I can remember every single song, what, where, where I was, what, how I wrote it, how I produced it, what, what instruments, what, what sounds I was looking for this and that, you know, and, wow. and what was, what was cock blocking it at the time. And, um, you know, I, I, for like every single song, I remember the only time I don't remember something is if, if I was like, you know, when you get Mexican blackout drunk, you know what I mean? Where you just stand in there, you know, and you're totally, and that never really happens to me. Wait, I, you know, why I is it into Mexican a, blackout? Because it's tequila or something? Well, it's like, like the Mexican guys, my Mexican friends, like when they get drunk, they hit this certain point where they're just standing there, like the lights are on, but nobody's home. Mm. You know what I mean? And, uh. <laughs> I, I guess I shouldn't say that sounds racist, but it is, it's true. You know, I mean, there's a, it happens to a lot of people, but I would never get like that very often, you know, where somebody else would black, would pass out. I would just shift into a different gear yeah. and it was like a whole different, oh, a no. whole different personality. I think, yeah, you know, we've my, all, I think even white people, we've been there too. I don't know. I, I feel like everything, a, everything you repress becomes now the person that becomes the forerunner and, and everything that uh, that you you try to be, or you, that you you know because of your manners, because of your morals and your ethics and stuff, all of that guy takes a back seat. You know, mm. what I mean, it's pretty much non-existent. And like Howard Stern always said, uh, everybody's like who he is on the air and who he is at home personally. 
you know, two different people. And, but he's even stated, he says, well, I'm on the air. That's who I am. Hmm. So I'm at home. It's all conforming, you know what I mean? And, uh, I totally get that, yeah. you know, but I mean, there's, there's a line you draw, like when you're just, I would just all my anger and frustration, and everything, which is basically why I medicated myself so often through so much through the, through my career. It's, it's a vicious circle. It's, he's, he's doing this because of frustration. And like for a long time, it was, it was so depressing and so frustrating. I couldn't fucking change things that, uh, that it was that or, or kill myself, you know what I mean? And, um, hmm. and so, you know, so I went with that, you know, and then, and then as I got clean or when I would get on clean spurts, I would so quickly remember why I was staying and staying out of my mind. You know what I mean? It's just, hmm. you can't live that frustrated and that angry and, and that with everything going on around you. So ridiculously stupid and the wrong moves and, which I've always felt, you know, throughout my entire career, you know, with, especially with that band, it's like, these are not the right moves to be making. This is ridiculous. And, and the, the person who should be making calling the shots and the decisions is, is the visionary, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Which is, which is me. But when you got somebody else that, that's just stepping onto the visionary platform with you and to the point of where, where the, the identity you even take a back seat in the identity to uh to the band and 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 you know and the reality is that it, i wrote the songs and i and my voice were the were the signature of the band and what got the band uh you know the deal what got the band loved and heard and respected by you know all of the our heroes and stuff like that was was because of you know, the songs I write and, and my vocal style and, um, and, but, but I was like the low man on the totem pole as far as having any say so or anything like that, which is, is ridiculous, but it's just, that's just the way it started working out. Is you, 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 you go to give something for, for love to be loved. And then, then you, you would never dream that somebody would just take it, start taking it whether you what regardless of what you thought about it that's i'll give the shirt off my back but when you're stealing it that's a whole different issue for me and um and you know the violation and stuff mm-hmm. it's just absurd it's absurd but well now you have I, more I, I, creative freedom and uh as a solo <laughs> artist as opposed to being in a band and also you're not working with a major label so like you're pretty much calling all the shots now right yeah i'm calling all the shots but basically without any of the opportunities and, and that that I used to have at the time where where those opportunities would have been were crucial and vital and and they were just uh the all of, all of the, the judgment calls and everything that was just done wrong and uh and, and ridiculously stupid and for the wrong reasons and other people's personal agendas you know management uh labels um you know just just for the lack of and, and you know, I would have, I would know what we should be doing. I would say, no, this is wrong, or this and that. But, but the way it was perceived was, I would pop up periodically and say this while everybody, while all this stuff is being already put into place. But, but it's like I wasn't. Nobody's making me aware of of a decision that's happening. And I find out, I find out a lot of calls that are judgment calls that are made when I'm holding the damn record in my hand or where I'm already on some on the bus somewhere and it's like and at that point it's etched in stone and you can't do anything about anything therefore you know it medicate again and and then mm. so that i didn't wasn't that's where I, I really lacked with my consistency in uh being present with uh with a clear head you know what i mean mm-hmm. but i mean any idiot would have known that all these moves were wrong but but uh some idiots don't care. <laughs> well, yeah, we can't, unfortunately we can't go back in time, but you know, one thing that you're doing that's cool is you're, you're kind of helping out some of these younger bands from making those same mistakes, maybe by having these interviews, but you also did, you had this, I thought this was cool. You had a song contest um, where other bands covered your songs. And um, so you've talked about maybe having some interest in possibly helping out younger bands with producing or maybe helping to write songs. 
excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah. Um, it's something new to me. Yeah. After all these years, because of you know spending so much time in my life with with uh, one foot in and one foot out of reality, um, you know, he's waiting for the hammer to fall. Was, I've always been in a position where where I'm one fucking move away from total devastation, totally, you know, not, you can't even exist. And uh, you're not able to think about things, but you don't have the luxury of um, thinking about different ideas of things that you'd like to do with your, with your talents and your, you know, creativity, like, like uh, finding other bands and, and producing them and writing for them and things like that, which I would, have absolutely no problem doing provided that I like what, what I hear to begin with. I like the piece of clay that, uh, that somebody presents like, Oh, I, I can see myself uh, working with this. Yeah. I mean, cause I ha I would have to like it unless I had a, had a big paycheck, you know, which obviously something new is not going to have a big paycheck and, um, nor I wouldn't get it anyway. If somebody's fine fuck me out <laughs> but uh but it's uh i have to i would have to like it like uh i've never really sang lead vocals on any other artist i did a few times and it was for decent money and um but when when somebody you know when i get involved in something it's not just like a producer it's not like any other hiring a session guy or somebody to sing something or this and that i mean if you're getting me, you're getting a lot that comes with it. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. like, like rearrange, rewrite things, uh, you know, I have to turn it into me. And, um, like, just like with producing, I've tried to, I produced a couple of things in the past and most, most of them were, were like friends projects and stuff. And by the end of it, the end result would always turn out. Everybody fucking loves it, but the process itself, would be I'm the enemy, you know what I mean? And uh, cause I'm basically tearing everything apart and, and telling you suck at this and you're stuck on this and this and that, and here's what you should be doing. And, and before you know it, you're orchestrating and puppeteering the whole damn thing. <laughs> and so it's like, what am I even doing? You know? And, and, and I'm, all I'm getting is, is uh flack for doing this until the end result. And then the guys can't recreate it anyway. <laughs> You know, once you oh, yeah, once you wow. produced it and it's and it's great, then they can't recreate it. And they that they're not they don't think in that in that uh, spectrum. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, I like the I like the thought of of you know I just like I'm just getting you know it's taking a while, but I'm trying to get a foundation, um, some sort of a organize, organized type company or something you know put together you know starting first and foremost with with going out and getting my money from everybody that fucked me in the ass you know what i mean but but to start to put together more more uh more capabilities more uh you know different different types of because there's not much i i couldn't figure out how to do you know from from uh fixing uh from making something battery operated work on elect work with electricity all the way to, uh, to putting together a song, you know, it's, I can pretty much, it's, you know, when, if I start anything, I can pretty much say to my school, this will go well. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, I'm confident and I know what, what I'm capable of. And, uh, yeah, but, well, I heard you say something about, uh, you're doing stuff around the house. Are you just like fixing stuff, like doing normal things now that this is like become a new hobby for you? Just, I'm I'm feeling more satisfaction and fulfillment from doing things like that that I physically can see results from, and um, and you know I mean I spent look how many years I've put into uh, put into the arts and stuff. And as far as my dream was uh, was never to be a famous rock star. My dream was to was to create something one day that was in the same breath you could hold in the same breath as, as the great things that I grew up listening to and, and would sit there and like, man, this is great. And it would inspire me and, and, uh, and, uh, 
you know, um, just uh, you get your influences from and stuff. But that was my dream or my goal, and and I believe I've I've done that, you know, and, and as a long time ago. And but like I said, that stuff doesn't really pay the bills, and um, you just have to go on and and also once it, once I didn't even ever thought about the fact of of being able to so much affect someone's life or or to put color into somebody's black and white existence and uh that never even occurred to me when I first started doing this and once I started to see that was happening that became that also drove drove my my bus you know what I mean because mm-hmm. those are the things that are important to me if you know I've I've had big houses I've had big, fancy this fancy that and I still would would only uh, utilize like one small area where, where I did what I did my thing, you know, and everything else was just for everybody else. And, and so I don't need really anything. I just needed a, maybe something solid, which I wasn't capable of, of being involved in anything solid, you know, because I was so not solid. And, um, and I kind of have that now. And, 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 uh, and kind of a security that this isn't going away and this is a good thing. And, and, um, just the whole being an influence and, uh, and, uh, kind of, a a mentor now to, to kids and, uh, that I, that I love, that care about me, that look to me for, <clears throat> for answers and guidance and, and, um, in a household that where I live in it and people live in it and, and things are needed to be done. And, um, and to have take the pride in doing it because it's also, you know, considered my place as well now. And, and, um, it's not discouraging. It makes mm-hmm. me to the point of where I'm being told by, you know, she's telling me all the time, says, would you stop fixing this or fixing <laughs> that or building this and that? Would you get to your, get to your, your duties that you got to do that are stacking up? And I'm like, but it doesn't work that way with me. And, and it's, it's like a switch that turns on. When it turns on, there's nothing else that I do. I I go huh. one thousand percent into something. Like when a batch of songs comes, or something like that, I sit there and I don't. I'll stay up for days, huh. you know, doing making these songs. As soon as I finish one, another one would come. But then there's also periods, uh, more often, where where nothing is coming huh. and nothing is, you know, in uh. And I'm not as inspired or motivated to do that. And plus, it takes it's what I do is not a, a a situation where you can, like, if you go to do a job, you, you mm-hmm. go work, go to work, or something where you you're not going to do nine to five. Is what you're saying? Yeah, well, it's not something that you that you're capable of. Uh, all right, like a lot of artists that treat it as a it's a business. We're going to go to work today. We're going to write a song today. Yeah. We're going to do this or that today. That doesn't work like that with me. When they come, they come. When the shit comes, when that feeling or that urge tells me it's time to do this, then there's no denying it, and I go fucking full force into it. But if I'm not full force into one thing, I'm full force into another because that's that's just the way I am. I don't, you know, go big or go home. Yeah. Well, so you got um, a you got the new song, all my favorite things. And that was actually, I heard that you said it was a B-side. You were supposed to release this party time song, but you couldn't do the party time song because of the quarantine. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was but not, not party time. Oh, When that not, song was getting ready to. Yeah, yeah. No, the song is called party time, right. but it was absolutely the opposite of party time when the, you're ready to release the song. So it would have been just another shortcut to thinking. And I said, well, let's not waste that because, uh, because this, the whole deal now is is to make a whole record. Um, first of all, it it even it doing it the cheapest you possibly can, cutting the most fat off, um, is still a, a you know quite considerable uh, expense. There's expenses involved in that, you know, because you got to get certain certain guys. You have to get to play on things that cost money. Uh, somebody to engineer and mix. All of that shit costs money, you know. Then there's there's food and and uh, different arrangements and expenses involved, and who's staying where, and mm. this and that, and where you're doing all this. That costs money. 
rental on this and that or studios for, for a certain amount of times and stuff all costs money and nothing, nobody will, will do any of that for free, you know? So sure. it costs, it costs quite a bit. And then, like I said, you know, that never justify the means. I don't ever, I don't end up getting anything out of, out of it except the love for it and, and other people's love. But like I said, that doesn't pay the bills. And so to make a whole record, and then you go out and you do your your round of promotion for it, which is uh, like when we first did our first couple interviews, it, I was doing like five or six a day for like three weeks, you know, with uh, the promotion of, of Beautiful Things record. And um, and then, but it's, it's all just promotion and publicizing and, and getting your name out there for a collection of things, as opposed to if you're just releasing one song you get you can do the same amount of publicity and the same amount of promotion and not be like wasting the rest of those songs which i don't consider wasting but it's just um economically it doesn't really make sense anymore people most of the masses don't really buy cds mm-hmm. anymore um yeah it's kind of like record. uh when in the 60s it was the beatles and everything was about the single and then it went to the albums in the 70s and 80s and now it's going back to the singles well, it only, it only goes to the albums with with a, a band or a project where the album is great. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, yeah. and I've tr- I've tried to never put filler on anything that I do. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I've always I'm I'm like a biggest fan. You know, I look at everything. I listen to stuff when I don't even consider that I I write or create most of this shit. I consider like there's a there's a higher energy that that's giving me this stuff and. Uh, and so I'm the, the biggest fan. I'm like, when I'm done with something, I'm like, holy shit, that sounds fucking great. And, and I can't believe it. And that gets to be me that did that. And that's fucking cool. And um, so when I, when I make a record, you know, I get, like I said, when I get involved in something, I start going head, head into it. Um, I, re- I, I get completely absorbed in it where there's, I'll forget to eat. I'll forget to sleep. I'll forget to do anything. And, um, but, and I, I have a stockpile of great stuff that I've written since the beautiful things record. And it's sitting there and I would love nothing more than to, to, to make a, a full record, you know, but uh, how do you, really, you know, I pretty much got a, I'm learning how to track everything myself, get the equipment and learn how to use the equipment to do it properly. So that when you can send it out, they have it mixed by somebody, they got something that they can mix. that's not a pile of shit. <laughs> you know, and, and, and when you're making your demos and when you're first creating a song, there's, there's, there's a magic to that original performance, that original idea, the way that you, you, uh, cr- created it, that you can't seldom can recreate when you go to, uh, you know, you'll still, most people will only hear the studio version, the record version of something. They won't hear the, the original idea, the original way it was of, you know, structured and, and, uh, the original, uh, performances on everything. Mm-hmm. And, um, and if they did, there is, yeah, sonically, it sounds better when it's the studio version, the, the record version, like sonically does, but there's an energy, there's an excitement and, uh, and, uh, innocence, um, magic in the original. And so mm-hmm. now I'm trying to, to, uh, make sure that when I do demo these and, and create them, that they're not pieces of shit. Yeah. Tracks, you know, well, I like used that. to buy, when I was such a hardcore music fan when I was in high school, I used to buy the uh, bootleg demo tapes. You could buy like bootleg demo tapes that were Guns N' Roses and all these bands. And I would listen to it and I was like, this is the same. It doesn't even sound like the same band. It's it's amazing how right. much different well, they can be. Well, a lot of the big bands have, have had a, have had a big time producer, those big bands, those yeah. big records that you listen to. And, and a producer is basically taking, taking the artist as paint and, and painting his, his vision with the artist as, as uh, just the materials and the producer is doing that. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. a lot of these bands, like, like that Guns N' Roses record, that, that appetite, that was fucking, that's a masterpiece. That's just where, all everything involved that comes together and creates this, you know, I mean, I don't believe that, that any of their demos re- quite captured that, you know, the magnitude of that, 
Oh, they no. have a record. They have to yeah. fight for destruction. Well, if I, I think you it know? was the Use Your Illusion demos that I got, and they, I did, I questioned if it was even the same. But maybe it wasn't. I don't know because it sounded so Probably different. Not. So it was like very yeah. like a lot of their stuff they wrote. It was like very acoustic and very way stripped down. And then when they go into the studio, they add all these horns and keyboards and you know electric guitars and things. So, well, if that's when somebody starts off one way, like they start off with a great producer and it can present it, and there's something that that's amazing, and then somebody gets uh, somebody gets to start controlling things and and stops getting a producer and starts thinking they can do it all themselves. And, <laughs> and you lost all that magic. And, but I've never, we have seldom had a producer. I've produced every, even when we had a producer, I produced, you know, except for strength. I had a producer for that one who, who really put a lot of vision into uh, what we were doing, which I loved. I love like that's, that's sort of a collaboration, like things I wouldn't have thought of and stuff like mm-hmm. that, you know, but, Seldom has that ever happened with me. I pretty much have a vision of it when when I create when it's in my head when the idea yeah. comes. They're pretty obvious. They're not these songs that I write and perform are not uh, rocket science. You know what I mean, pretty basic. Yeah, and but isn't so that, there's not. Yeah, you need whether it's a producer or a songwriting part. Like I feel like you need somebody a lot of times to help with the vision and kind of like, it's that kind of going back and forth chemistry that, I mean, Lennon and and McCartney, I mean, you you got, that's the, the two of them together. I mean, they're both geniuses uh, alone, but together it's even more powerful. Don't you agree? Well, that, but George Martin came in, it's like, you hear, you hear some of the demos, their original demos of some of those songs, the way they were written. And they're not, they don't have that impact. They're not that amazing. George Martin, you know, was as, was vital as is any of those guys in that band, as John or Paul mm-hmm. or anybody, he was as vital to uh, putting that together and the stars aligned there. I would have loved to have had, or even had a chance to see what could have, what I was capable of having a producer to that, of that, you know, of that, that greatness that where they took what my ideas and stuff, because I think I did a pretty good job on my own. But I was, I'd like to see what, you know, take it out on the Autobahn and open it up and see what the did baby they, can do. Did they, when you were in Enough's Enough in the early days, like the first couple albums, did they give you a list of producers to work with? That's what I've heard other bands have said that they'll give you a list and you can kind of pick from the list. Um, our first record, we, uh, we wrote, or, you know, I wrote with Chip as well, but wrote, had so many songs. You know, a lot of times a band's first record is like their greatest hits up until mm-hmm. that point. Mm-hmm. And, and we had so many songs and we were so, because Chip and I'd spent, you know, so many hours with a four track machine and an eight track machine and putting these songs together. And like I said, they're not rocket science. So when we did our first record, we already, our first manager owned a studio. So we were pretty, pretty uh, experienced in, and doing that. And so we, our first record was produced by us. It says another guy's name on it. That was, that was a lot of my things say somebody else's name on something too, but that doesn't mean they oh. had anything to do with it. But yeah, then the, after that record, the success of that record, then there was a, a short list of, of guys. And, um, and you know, with the, the sound that we had and the songwriting that we had, just like the band might not have been the, the, perfect uh members choice of members to be performing and that style and that style of songwriting you know what i mean Mm -hmm. these guys weren't necessarily even even like derek frigo never he thought i wrote dear prudence he had no idea he didn't know beatles songs or (laughs) or anything like that wow and a totally different influence yeah And, and and a lot of those big producers were it was the same way these guys you know the the production sound of our band due to the players and stuff with the, the, the you know, the heavy distorted guitars and shit, putting that with uh, then the, the super poppy melodies and song structures didn't really make a lot of sense. You know, there's very few bands able to, to successfully put that on, on a, a record, you know what I mean? Combine mm-hmm. those two and um, they call it power pop. 
which I think I'm the king of, and which I pro- they uh, proclaim me the king of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, I think I'm the king of nothing. But um, <laughs> so finding finding these big name producers and stuff, it wouldn't have made much sense. And 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 uh, you know the the labels that we were with really didn't uh, envision that either. And so it was let's you know just do your thing because if it ain't fixed, why break it? Yeah. You know I mean? Well, and, yeah. Um, so now. So- you're back with enough's enough for at least one song, the new song uh, "Strangers in My Head," which I've uh, I listened to that one and and the other uh, the other new one that you have, uh, not not party time. All my favorite things. Those are both great new songs. Um, but tell me about the the new one with enough's enough because um, I think it's like it's really melodic, really good arrangement, Beatles esque, but it's a little heavier vibe. Did you write it with a heavier vibe to make it kind of sound more enough's enough? Yeah, I I, uh, I have a. a very wide, very versatile in my writing. And, and, um, and like I've always said, I let the songs tell me what they want to be. Uh-huh. And, um, and, uh, especially now I'm able to do that without having any, anybody in there, uh, you know, kind of handcuffing one hand behind your back, you know, in their, in their ring. And, um, and so I'm able to have full control over what's going to happen. And, and I write a very versatile style, to, uh, you know, a wide range of, and I have, you know, like I, with uh, with beautiful things, I chose perfectly chose that that lighter direction. That uh, I wouldn't call it light, but but uh, it, I kind of picked a picked a side of the fence, you know, to 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 work on. And um, but that didn't mean that I wasn't still writing the the enough enough sounding stuff. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so I've got like like most of the new stuff that I have sitting there backlogged is. Uh, heavier edge hmm. stuff and so uh what happened was in the i just it's such a frustrating violating fucking thing that going through with chip and uh the business and and stuff and so i mean i even went on a huge tirade when just like there was a straw that broke the camel's back and i was like fuck this this shit has to end today and this is absurd and uh so but it went on it was what i would say it was really fucking me up in the head and emotionally and stuff where uh, I wasn't able to uh, function properly. Uh, it's because I've so conflicted and so fucked up in the head over this shit. And then the pandemic came along and all it took was uh, Chip texting me happy birthday, which I hadn't spoken one word of text or, or verbally or, you know, physically or anything with him in like five over five years. Wow. You know, and, and, it, and it was just, you know, you know, if, if you don't talk to somebody for so long, then you're hesitant to even, even, uh, you know, call them like your grandma or something. You haven't yeah. talked to them and you haven't called in so long that now it's hard to call. Well, it got like that. And, you know, and then when we started talking, you know, I responded and before you know it, there was a phone conversation because, uh, there was a licensing deal going down and which is actually the reason that he even contacted me because certain things he he certain deals and things and ways of making money he's not capable of without involving me like relicensing a couple of older records and so i didn't really understand or, or get that at first you know and so i'm like and then we start talking and all of the the, the political shit and all of the the issues and things aren't the f- forerunner or the for in the in the on the front burner what you're doing is just talking and and talking to your friend who who you spent all these years with Mm -hmm. doing all this and that you know and uh everybody's on their best behavior you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and so so that i you know kind of got duped into thinking that there was there was an opportunity to uh to resurrect this thing to some extent you know, um, where I could still do my thing, but also be a part of that for the fans sake. And for, for me emotionally, cause I mean, enough enough was 30 years of my life. That's all my, my blood, sure. sweat and tears that I um, killed myself for, for all those years. And to, and to have to, uh, just cut that loose is, is not an easy thing to do. And people will be like, well, you're doing better now. We like this better now and this and that. So that doesn't matter. It's like, you like your your baby that you just had now. What about your children? You know the who have grown up in this. And that? You can't just cut that loose. So, 
for me, it was, uh, I was looking hopeful at, and for, especially for the fans, um, perspective, because, you know, it's, it's our diehard fans are mighty and, um, it, they were kind of divided and, uh, and, uh, for, you know, just looking at it from a fan's perspective, which is the only reason I do anything anymore. That's my whole motivation. These songs I, I consider belong to the fans, you know, and, uh, especially if I'm not going to get anything for them, I'd rather give them, give them to some people that I love, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so it was hopeful and I kind of was strung along a little bit. I mean, I put it out there. Oh, Hey, I'll do this. You know, I'll, I'll be a part of this again to some capacity if you're interested, but it wasn't, uh, but it ended up just getting one song and, mm-hmm. Then when I was like, well, where do we go from here? Yeah. And nothing. It was like back to focus. We can take that song, stick it on the record so I could put my name on that record and, um, you know, and bury it amongst the other 10 songs, you know what I mean? And um, just to have my name in there because he he likes to do that. He'll take somebody, somebody could, could have came and delivered beer or something. Their own name can go on something. It depends on who they are. And uh, so I kind of got duped along and, um, and so, uh, to f- only to find that the, the mindset and the agenda were still, still, uh, self-serving and, uh, you know, I mean, I just don't understand uh, the agenda over there that, that who is he doing? I was asked him point blank, who are you doing this for? Who do you do this? Is this, this is just for every decision you're making is just for you. You don't care when there's no consideration for what the fans want or the fans think of anything like you go over to that camp and you post anything that's favorable about, I think it was better with Donnie that you're deleted, you're blocked immediately. And that's preventing anybody from, from uh, any kind of growth or improving or something by not seeing what people are thoughts are and living in a bubble. And, you know, I was just like, well, who do you do this for? You know, and I was, you know, and, and I knew remembered so quickly just being back involved with him for, for the brief little few minutes that, that it was, I remembered it came all come that came back to me of why I, why I wasn't doing that anymore. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, huh. and, uh, and so I was basically getting ready to put myself in a position where I would endure that again for the fans, for the, for the, the, rep- the integrity like enough enough didn't sell zillions of records or anything, yeah. but the integrity, the musical integrity of the records and that reputation of that was really, really high. And, and all of the records, you know, were very, we were held, you know, really regarded as well. And then all of a sudden that name just, it wasn't that anymore. So it was like, and that's, and I take that personally. I'm like, well, you're devaluing, what the fuck we, you know, we actually, it actually had that poor, poor band name. You know what I mean? What he's doing to it now. It's like, I don't hate it, nor do I like it. It just doesn't do anything for me. There's, it just, right. there's no emotion. It is or interesting anything. because it's, I feel like enough's enough is the two of you. I mean, well, really originally, I mean, it's, it's for you guys, but um, like, why didn't he call it chips enough or. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I would have, see, I wouldn't have chill. I wouldn't have. Um, used it, and I wasn't prepared or planned on using the name for anything. You know, if it, if I wasn't doing it with him, you know what I mean? Right. But he, because it's kind of like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's like Axl Rose. He was Guns and Roses when he he took because he took the name, and then he was, but it was totally different band. It was mostly just Axl Rose solo album. Well, at least he's the singer. He's the sound that you're used to True. hearing well, that you love about the thing. You know, but Chip was isn't the singer not the writer he's not anything except the bass player from what you're what you love from long enough to know mm-hmm. you know and, and and a minor concert you can hear by by what he's doing now on his, himself and what i'm doing now on my own without him you can hear what each of us basically contributed to mm-hmm. this stuff you know and mm-hmm. and though and though i i wrote and and you know just about everything um I would write differently and I would do things, produce things differently when I was working with him than I would not working with him. And so I considered that that was important to the, 
what it, what that band was, the, those songs and stuff. And so that's why I considered wor- working with him as enough's enough. Plus, mm-hmm. he's the rooster on he's the rooster on the cornflake box. You know what I mean? No, you so, always say that. What does that mean? Just <laughs> he's the face of. Well, the... Yeah, you, um, yeah, you see the box. There's no rooster in the box. <laughs> You know what I mean, there's no chicken or anything in there. True, you know, but, true. Then, but you recognize cornflakes, but yeah, there he yeah. is. Okay. You know, there's the, the rooster, and that's what he is. He's like the mascot, and, he, is what you're saying. Yeah, but I mean, he took that so far, and he and he's over exaggerated that, and over over, you know, just made the impression out there, um, even consciously, that he did so much more than what he actually did, and and that's. Which I don't, I don't have that big of a problem with. It's when you're, but if you're taking taking away from me what I actually did, and and, and that's where I have the problem with it, you know. And so, well, you did I'm call him the, the best power pop bassist around, right? Well, he was. Yeah. He is. I don't believe that that he sounds like he is on these new records. You know, when he had something really great to to play to to play on. He really rose to the occasion, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. and now now you don't even really notice the bass in his songs. And that's what he does though. If you're not showing your your strengths, you're showing your weaknesses. And um and that's what I believe he's doing. And just it's just devaluing everything. And so I thought that this was an attempt and at least one the fans would get one new one, which is just you know, you'll see. I love the it's song. Example. It's a great song. <laughs> It's a it's a perfect example of the of the 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 collaborating uh, concept between he and I because I have this I have this song demoed before he even heard it and it's it's exactly the same only it's just not sonically the same but you mm-hmm. look on his record and it says V's enough you know what I mean and um, I'm like what the fuck man and um but he didn't even use it to I would have used it. If I was him to uh and push that as the single. That's the thing that people want to see and want to hear and it's and it's a great song and it and it's reminiscent of, of what people know and love about the band. And um it's my vocals, it's this and that and but he didn't. He used some yeah. other Jared used his other bullshit. Well if you go on iTunes that, right now and uh because I just bought it on iTunes, it, it's the most popular song on the album. I haven't listened to the rest of yeah, this well, album, but well, of, of course, that's like uh, if, all, if all your options are uh, decapitation, uh, bullet to the brain, <laughs> uh, being stabbed, <laughs> hanging, this and Jeez. that, or or not getting killed. You know, what I mean, it's it's pretty obvious what what choice you're going to pick there, and and so still, it stands, so still some bad blood between you two then. I wouldn't, I I wouldn't call it bad blood. I'm trying. I was. My heart is in such a different place than his. He just doesn't. He does. He, it's like I said. The agenda is is self serving. It has nothing to do with what anyone else feels about anything, especially me. You know, or especially or the fans or anybody other than himself. And as long as he's got new thing of Fly High Michelle to perform and can get on these cock rock conglomeration shows and tours and stuff like that you know opening for for bands like faster pussycat or something like that that's it's uh it's absurd you know but 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 he's happy you know because because it's obviously it's more spotlight for him it's less less hassle it's less uh headache than not having to deal with me you know what i mean and um and he's just choosing that over but i'm like what are you doing this for what is your what is your objective to to why you do this? I mean, what about what about everybody else? You know, and uh, so it's 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 kind of I don't know if you really label it as bad blood. It's it's very uh, conflicted, and uh, you know, there's just a, like a big question mark above my head. I talk to him, and, and I feel like ten minutes later, after I think that we talked about something, we discussed something. Ten minutes later, I'll think to myself, well, I know less than I did <laughs> before we spoke, you know what I mean? Hmm. And, uh, and that's just the whole thing, you know, the, but when I saw that he really even wasn't going to push that song and, and, you know, for obvious other reasons, because it would, uh, it put everything else he did on that in the shadows, you know what I mean? And, um, 
so that once again, there is the self-serving uh, attitude and agenda. But when I saw that wasn't happening, I was like, well, this is ridiculous. Um, that's just, a, it's just a violation to everybody, especially me, you know, uh, putting me in that position again. And, um, so, well, I'm going to, I'm going to at least, at least in my camp, make sure that it's pushed and make sure that it's put out. And I think a good day to do it would probably be the day before the rest of that record comes out. You know what I mean? And, uh, well, that's, you know, a lot of my team, you know, made that call and said, let's do this. And I said, all right, well, let's go for it. Sounds cool to me. You know, I'm, uh. I'm all up for sticking it in the ass. I mean, <laughs> pull one, pull one of them dicks out of my ass and stick it in some other ass. You know, I mean, that works for me. But um, I don't think, uh, you know, enough. It won't reach enough people um, to make a really big difference. But at least to the ones who uh, look for it, you know that uh, that it's important to. They'll have it, and. Uh, and it's not going to get. And it does nothing but help him anyway. It promotes and will sell his help sell his record because that's where you can find that song, yeah. you know. But um, but like you know, I mean, no, but like I said, you don't need to buy a CD anymore to get the songs, and people just download it or listen to it on YouTube or something. And so that's where it leads back to why I I just put releasing singles now. Uh-huh. And um, but you know, at least I got it out there, and at least people got a chance to see it featured somehow oh, yeah. and i'm all and, and i'm also presenting it as this is the this is enough enough not just enough this is me heavy mm-hmm. you know which is which it basically is yeah. you know but is but this is how it sounds this is what you know what it, where it picks up after dissonance record mm-hmm. this is the same guys this is the same formula the same chemistry as that so here's one one more for you if, yeah if Possibly the last, but hopefully not, you know, because because people love that stuff. I'm saying, well, here you at least got one, you know, and uh, that where somebody's actually focusing the attention on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's a good song. I hope you can do more. But you're also doing. Are you doing live streams now? Or you're gonna do live streams? I'm. Um, I'm like I said. I got uh, I got bogged down with a lot of projects I got involved with, and and I also just wasn't wasn't feeling it. Um, artistically for a while here. And, um, and uh, there's a few things that I still owe fans that have, have paid money for something and um, they haven't gotten it yet. But I, I know that, that I'll make good on that. And I know that I'll, I'll make it worth their weight. And um, so all of that will tie together because the, the way I'm going to do that is uh, with all of these songs that, that I'm going to release these videos to these fans who purchased it or this and that, I'm going to record a, uh, some backing tracks to it as well and perform it live to a backing track where you say, if I just fly on a shell, there'll mm-hmm. be a drums, there'll be a, you know, I'll make a, a, a mock drum beat and a bass and uh, some uh, other guitars and some background vocals. And then I'll sing and perform it to that, you know? So as I'm building those and constructing those, my plan is to, uh, to do a, a whole live performance online of a, a concert in that fashion, you know, but that's going to be a lot of work. And, and I'm just delving into it now. I just, just put my studio, finished putting that together the other day. And so now I can, you know, and now it's just getting over the apprehension and of getting started. You know what I mean? Cause it's, cause when I'm doing that, I'm going into a, a huge emotional and energetic and physical uh, activity, you know, mm-hmm, that's going to mm-hmm. last, that's, a, that's going to take a lot out of me for a long time. And, um, and so that's, that's the whole thing of actually playing the first fucking note on the first thing. And then once I do, then it's all just going to roll. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, um, there's some new gear that I've gotten that I've never used before and things like that, that, that I, that I've been told this is going to make a big difference in this and that. And so all of this stuff, you know, I'm going to be learning. And, you know, if you don't, if I don't really know something, my way around something, like I knew GarageBand, like the back of my hand, but, uh, but now I'm using Logic, which is like GarageBand on steroids. And there's a lot of things as far as engineering and production wise and effects and different things you got to use hmm. properly that I don't, I'm not familiar with, with how any of those work or how to make those, those work. You know, I would just adapt. I've already used very, very, inc- unconventional methods of 
of uh, accomplishing what I have accomplished on my own, you know. So, but I'm going to try to do things right and um, see what I can what I can do. And I think once I do get it rolling, um, I'll be uh, a lot more productive than I was. Yeah, you know I, what I mean, I, I, be cool. I can I can I can churn them out you know, every week. If, yeah. Cause it sounds like if, uh, if, touring is not coming back anytime soon. So live streams kind of all we have right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, some places that it, it, they have opened back up and, and like I said, just went out just for, I haven't gone out to a club or anything in so long. And then I do go out, I'm persuaded to go out one night. And um, when everybody's saying, don't do this cause it's dangerous still out there don't go do this around all those people and stuff. And even if the club is only let allowed 75% capacity, that's still elbow to elbow. Yeah. Uh, people without masks on. And, uh, and, um, and I, I, you know, went against, uh, all advice and, and this and that and went and did it. And then it's, what it turns out that two days later, I get a call to, of how dangerously close I was to it. How long and, ago uh, was that? Have you are you out of the woods now? Has it been more than a, fourteen days? It's a week. It's a week ago. Oh, I do. I do believe that was last weekend, possibly okay. or possibly two weekends ago. I don't. Time kind of doesn't exist in my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, it's just in a all just one big time. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean that's that's how it was, and um, but that that just tells me right there though that some people are going to contract this. Mm-hmm. Everybody. We are all going to come in contact with this virus. We are all. There's no two ways about it. That germ, that virus, if if we ha- if you haven't already touched it or been exposed to it, you will be. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, just some people are hard. gonna get. Some people are gonna get it, and it's gonna be heavily symptomatic. Some people will come across it and, and it not do anything to you. And it's just it's it's something that's really under the microscope these days. As where if, if there if it wasn't so if it wasn't so discovered and and, and uh, publicized and 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 focused on, I don't think people necessarily would be uh, no, would be paying attention or focusing on how many people are, are getting are dying from this because people are a lot of people are dying from everything every day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so it's just become it was definitely a big it was good business for news and stuff like that, you know, and, and it is something new that's out there and, uh, and a hazard, but there's a lot of hazards out there. And, and I, I believe in a lot of hazards that every day we, we, uh, are subject to like just driving your car, driving my motorcycle down the street every day. You know, I'm put, there's that risk that somebody's going to fucking cut me off or hit me or something like that. And, and, or you, you know, driving your car, some fucking truck is just going to go barrel in any, there's that risk in anything you do. Yeah. You take a sip of alcohol, like you hear all the time, but somebody took just one drink and, and it killed them somehow or this and that. And, and do you think so, you're more at risk though? Cause you're a smoker and cause of your history and everything. I think I'm, my analogy is I'm kippered. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what can you do to a piece of beef jerky? You know what I mean? It's really, yeah. you really can't affect it. You know what I mean? It's uh it's all dried out and chippered already. You know, there's nothing, <laughs> no way for anything to, to flow through it. Okay. And, um, that's a nice image. Until, it, until it's my time, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I've defied all odds up until now. You know, my lungs are still clear. Well, until the last time I was checked. And, you know, my pancreas is, I haven't had any problems with it since, since that happened. And, um, you know, it's not like I go to get regularly checked, but all my levels the, the last times that I have were, which weren't too long ago, everything's absolutely fine except for That's some, good. some, some damage, permanent damage to my liver. You know, I have cirrhosis and, uh, but I don't drink anymore and I'm not, I'm not, you know, uh, putting all those drugs and alcohol into myself anymore, but I'm certainly not, not eating anything I want to eat, you know what I mean? Or, mm. or not sm- smoking my cigarette is, Cause those look so cool, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's like, I'm not knocking out everything. I'm just being reasonable to, to my body. And, and, but you know, it's just not for the, not for the sake of, of, uh, watching out for it to be preventive. It's, uh, it's just what, what's happened to me. 
you know, I'm older. I've, I've just outgrown a lot of shit. And so I am not, not as, uh, brutal to myself. And, um, I did start drinking a little bit again, right before that happened. And, and when I do anything, like I said, I do it heavily. And, um, because I was sick. I didn't know that that's what was wrong with me. Right. I was just felt, I felt sick and I was, had a lot of things to do and having all those things to do while you're sick with no enthusiasm. When all you want to do is lay there. It's, it's impossible. So I re, you know, I reverted back to the crutch, you know? And, um, and like I said, when I do something, I do it heavy. So we're talking bottles and bottles of hard alcohol again a day, you know? And, and of course that happened, but, um, and it happened good. I mean, I, it fucking got me good. I had the doctor come and tell me you're going to die and all this and that shit. And I'm like, I just don't feel that yet. I don't feel that that's happening yet instinctually. And, uh, and then, you know, I mean, there was a few weeks after getting out of the hospital where everybody was like busting my balls. Don't do this. You can't do that. You know, the people are preparing my food. It would be broccoli and berries and shit like that. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I am just, this is this absolutely no enjoyment whatsoever in anything so, so fuck that you know what i mean so that's where that all my favorite thing song came from and um uh, but I, I don't think that i don't think it's it's gonna obviously it didn't get me this time mm-hmm. and you can't get much closer than i you know singing on the same microphone rubbing the same sweat together yeah. and stuff you know and and with a guy that the next day or two days later was was on his back with 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 the coronavirus, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and then and also in the same situation, his girlfriend, who came from another state, was in contact with and from New York and was in contact with with a lot of that. Actually, her father died of it, and she was heavily in contact with that. And New York is is you know the the spike is way higher there. She comes from there, and um. And uh, she tests negative, and and so huh. you know, and then he tests positive, who's who wasn't in contact with a lot of that, and so it's all the, it's all what's what's going to happen, you know what I mean? What's going to happen is going to happen, and um, you know, just out of courtesy, I like I don't, I don't denounce masks or I don't put you know knock them or anything, but but because I see the way people wear them, and um, they're it's basically ridiculously useless the the way most people wear these things and the same old mask and they're touching their mouth and they're pulling it off there so they could breathe and or their glasses fogging up and stuff. And then they're touching all the merchandise and stuff like that. And it's the same one. It's like, what good is that doing? You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. actually getting, getting more germs from your mouth on stuff than you normally would have had you not had a mask that you're messing with the whole fucking time you're in there. And, um, but People are take a big stand and they'll knock you and they'll be so violated that that if you uh you know your attitude bad attitude against the mask you know and I don't know how you're wearing your mask out there and I don't know who the people you're around and how they're wearing their masks but what I see it's absolutely ridiculously ineffective you know and uh and so but, I mean but I think I it's, yeah, it. it's better to probably just stay home or or avoid people and socially distance if I, you can I just say. I just say be be mindful. Definitely you know, be just mindful. Be, mind, be, be mindful. Keep your you know keep relatively be be considerate to others. You know, make sure that you're not breathing anybody's face or uh, coughing on anybody or t- you know getting your hands off where you you go to the bathroom ten times a day and you still don't. I know people that still don't. I have, I don't wash my hands after I use the bathroom. You know what I mean? I I don't know it. And that maybe my that's well my immunity system was was built up so strongly like my grandfather used to tell me, you know, he says it's all that germaphobe that that makes you uh victim or susceptible to to uh germs fucking with you because you have no immune system if you're you live your whole life germaphobe. And um as for me, you know, I pick pills up off the ground, and I don't know where they've been, I'd eat them. You know, somebody's like, Hey Donnie, what's this? I go nope, I'll let you know in about fifteen minutes. I'll tell you <laughs> But that was, wow. you know, it's like, I, I have no reservations. I was going to a restaurant and I'm hungry and we're getting ready to order. And I see something still sitting on the table and somebody left. I grab that shit. I start eating it. You know, like, there's nothing wrong with it. But <laughs> well, you uh, still do that now or hopefully not now? I, well, it's like, if, if the situation arose, I don't give a fuck. 
<laughs> Somebody's just going to throw it away. It's, it's the same, perfectly good. You know what I mean? Who, who sits there and wipes their boogers and shit all over their food they didn't eat? You know what I mean? Who does that? Nobody does. You start eating it, you know? They've touched in the it old days, breathed on the it old days, maybe coughed on it or licked it. So, so, so did the people that made it. You know what I mean? Well, hopefully so did, not. So did the, hopefully, hopefully not. they wore gloves yeah, well, and, a, and, a, and masks and uh, hairnets <laughs> and all those things. Yeah, you know better than that. You know better than that. That's there's not a big difference in what's sitting there on that somebody didn't eat and and what you, you, what comes served to you. In the old days, at least there there'd be a, a cigarette put out in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but now, now there, that's funny. Now there's not. You know. So, but I look at it, I go if I'm starving, like oh god, I'm so hungry. You know, I walk in like a pizza place or something. Somebody's left like a third of a pizza sitting there, and I'm starving. I'm like. I'm I'm on that motherfucker. I can't <laughs> eat it. <laughs> People are like, "What are you doing?" I go eating pizza. Yeah. So you can sit here wait for your fucking pizza. I said, "I'm fucking. I'm ready to leave in, in ten minutes." <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> oh, that is funny. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world right now. But um, you know, I don't think that that the the politicians are going to save us. So the, like, but you are kind of saving the world in a way because you answer a lot of your direct messages and people reach out to you. They, it's like you said earlier, people reach out to you. They were suicidal and stuff. Do you, are you still getting a lot of those kinds of messages? Oh, hell yeah. You know, but, uh, I'll spend more time in a day. I get so many PMs a day. It's ridiculous. Like how many a day, like a hundred or like on a, on a, on a slow day. I'll, I'll get, you know, say I'll be messaging with somebody and like, uh, you know, say if you and I was, that was the only way we were keeping in touch. Like I'll message you, I'll PM you, um, this day to let you know what the deal is. I would have to f- scroll for, you know, for literally feet to find you, to find your message. And, uh, oh. and just like, just like I respond to you. And then by the time you respond back, it's feet farther again. <laughs> and so, Wow. And with the way I operate, I never remember anything. I had to have a heads up call today to remind me that, that I'd be talking to you. And, and when I was told yesterday that this would be happening and I'm like, well, you're going to have to remind me uh-huh. right before it happens. Cause I, I get lost in the time and I'll just be, you know, God only knows what I'd be in the middle of. And, and I was done you call and I didn't have my earbuds in and, and, uh, you know, and, uh, I had to get up, you know, and, uh, but, yeah, I get a lot of them, but, but, you know, there's a lot of them. I just, it's the luck of the draw, which ones I, I see, you know, and you, of course you get a lot of them where just like anybody else gets this, this bullshit and garbage that people really shouldn't be sending to other people, like send just these chain letters and chain things and these gifs and these, uh, these memes and stuff that you go and post it to everybody's on your friend thing your PM and stuff like that. It's like, mm. why the fuck are you do, doing that to everybody? Nobody wants to see that. Or, I mean, most people don't, especially me. And it clogs up all my shit. But then if I see something that's long, somebody has wrote something that's long, a lot of times I'll, I can see the gist of what they're, it's the, the content in the first sentence. You know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. uh, as I'll, you know, I'll read the, the luck of the draw, which ones are there at the time where I'm looking at it. And, uh, Usually, you know, I'll, it's five or six of them a, a day that I'll uh, really go, you know, get involved and get in, in depth. And, you know, like my answers, responses to some of these people are, are, you know, as long as as many characters as there are, are allowed in a, in a message. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know, and there's still a lot of people. I don't know why necessarily that it would come to me to ask for for this and that because i mean you know i mean it's it's ridiculous it's, uh you know but i just seem to be able to have a little maybe a little more persuasion or a, or a way of saying something to somebody that makes it easier for them to, to grasp or easily to relate to and make more sense or something like that and just my personal experiences or experiences i've experienced from other people's experiences which i you know, I've experienced a lot in my life. And, uh, and basically it's, and it's also that my heart tells me to do it. It's, uh, you know, something in the same voice that gives me the songs tells me that I should be 
saying something to these people or saying this to that person uh-huh. and um and to find that that makes a difference and you can't put a price tag on that that's that's more important than any money in the world and that's more important than anything and um uh, you know I'm, and i if somebody's suffering it i it makes me suffer i don't like that you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Unless they're unless they're complete fucking jag off. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's good. So not only with your music is it helping, but just like if you you actually directly will talk to some of these people, that's great. So like, have you? I thought I heard something about um, you know, I mean, this is all hypothetical, but if they made a movie of your life, like who would play you? And you said John C. Riley, you would want him to to be you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't take Robert Redford. <laughs> no. Can't pick Johnny Depp for Donnie V. You know what I mean? But, uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not easy on the eyes, nor am I sexy. But uh, so John C. Riley, they could go the other route. He's funny <laughs> as fuck, and everything he's in, you know, he's a, yeah. entertaining. And uh, and then somebody t- said the other day, if I was a superhero, which one would I be? And, and they decided on Deadpool. <laughs> totally. Oh, I could see that. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that made sense to me. Cool. But, uh, yeah. Well, um, I always like to wrap up with a, a charity. I know that you are you still uh, working with the anti bullying campaign? Not so much. Uh, they really didn't give a fuck about me. Really? And, um, and, and to the point where of a couple of them were where they inquired, "Who is this that, that wants to reach out to help do this?" They go, "Him? Absolutely not. <laughs> That's the last guy we want to want to bring awareness to anything." And uh, I'm like, well, fuck you. You know what I mean? But, okay. Um, well, what I'm I'm trying to do now is, and I don't know why, but it's like the same thing. Like some voice, something is telling me that this is this is a something a direction that, like, with the cover stuff that I do, I had a little side project that I do, and it's it's just cover songs where I pump up the the volume, pump up the voltage on some old classics, and 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 get to sh- show off the the athletics of what I do, like what I can do vocally and things like that. And, um, and so I need a, a kind of a purpose to present that. Why am I, why is he, Donnie doing cover songs? You know, when we want another original this and that. And so, and with the name that I kind of came upon, um, the fallen blue, I like the sound of that name. And in the past I've been, they've, they've reached out to me. So it, it used to be called if that, that was a charity for, to help uh, bring awareness and to help fund, raise money for, the families of of uh, police and, and firemen and stuff like that that lost their lives in the line of duty. You know, it's their families, people that are yeah. left there. And uh, they've reached out to me in the past, and I've worked with them in the past, and I've gotten a couple of get-out-of-jail-free cards that actually worked. You know what <laughs> I mean? And, wow. and, and uh, But when I came up with that name again, I was like, I like the ring of it. And then something told me, well, let's try to uh, – get in hold of these people and get in direct uh, contact with them and, and, and make, you know, I'm trying to uh, make this a more, a bigger relationship and a more hands-on relationship by this organization. And, and then just so happens at that time, right as that, all of a sudden the police need a friend. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and if anybody, especially me, who has had many, many dealings with the law, with the uh, police, and and none of them have really been favorable, but uh, <laughs> but I mean, and uh, but when you think about it, nothing that I didn't bring on myself, you know, and um, doing their job and stuff, and, and and I don't believe that. Of course, there's a bad apples here and there, you know, that are involved in it, but but it's not like nobody knows that they're 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 there. They're they're allowed to continue on doing that shit, which means they're in cahoots with somebody who's higher up, and so that's where the issues are is the higher up than just the actual physical uh, police who are out there doing their job. Some of them, you know, get a little carried away, but that's their job. You know what I mean? And if it weren't for them, they you know, people be doing anything the fuck they wanted to. There'd be, there'd be, it, it would be a, a much more dangerous place to live, you know? And, um, and they need, a, you know, need a friend. And, and like I said, I don't know why, but something, some little thing inside me told me that that's, that's uh and you read the signs you watch the signs you know just like anywhere you want to go somewhere you want follow the signs you know and uh just tell me that this is possibly something that that's down the road you know to uh 
so I could still do this, this, this uh, outlet of my creativity and, and, and have a purpose for it where I'm not just doing it to jack off and, you know, spin my own wheels, right. you know, or, or for my, or for my friend who has, who is uh, making his dream come true by, by involving him in this, you know, and, uh, and, uh, but it's like I said, you know, something inspires me, something tells me, something's telling me all the things to say right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, was what kind of buffoon? I'm just a buffoon. Who would, <laughs> who would have an intelligent conversation with a fucking idiot like me? Well, I think you're interesting. I love the new, I love both your new songs. So thanks so much for coming on my show. Anything else you want to promote or any other upcoming projects that you have? Yeah, I got a, I'm releasing a, a actual vinyl 45, I think next month. Um, that's, uh, with the original single that was going to be the party time. And, um, it's kind of a, it's not as a deep song as, as everything that I'm known to have written, but it's more, uh, this anthem thing that, that I've been, that Chip and I were, were consciously trying to stumble on for our whole lives and our whole careers, like this, uh, this party anthem, mm-hmm. you know, like a rock and roll all night party every day type thing. And, okay. and I think it, it's a really, it's a really cool song. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> I think it would make a, a great beer commercial or something. Hmm. Um, but I'm releasing that on a 45 uh, vinyl with uh, all my favorite things on the flip side of it. And that'll be out, you know, next month. And, and of course I'll be doing a, doing a, a live, um, feed a live, you know, concert live stream, yeah, of, yeah, with the backing tracks and stuff. Okay. I try to take it up up a level than what most people are doing. Yeah. You know, uh, I saw Post Malone did something real cool, and um, it really brought awareness to him, uh, to me about him. He did a thing where there was like four different him and and three other guys uh, from three from four different locations somehow plugged this yeah. shit together and performed as a band and did a whole set of Nirvana stuff. Wow. I was like, wow, this fucking guy is fucking good. And, and that was really cool. And that was a step above what you're seeing with these other artists that just grabbing their acoustic guitar and, and uh, getting on there and posting every day or something like that. And it's like, all right, already. You know, um, you know, it's like, well, if you don't have a hit, who cares? You know what I mean? But, uh, but you know, you can't really say that, you know, if people just want to do that. And it kind of, I think it kind of levels the playing field right now, mm-hmm. you know, as opposed to having to go to a big stadium or something, arena to see a band or something there, they would be with the same, the same uh, venue or as, as everybody else right now, you got to do it online. And uh, everybody's got that opportunity. It's just a matter of getting exposed to amount of people. And, and, but I wanted to step it up a little bit and make it uh make it something, you know, more in lines of, uh, of a concert. Yeah. Something that's, that's Would you special. have other musicians or have you ever thought of like being in like a super group of like other, uh, musicians? Oh man, that, that would be awesome. Really? That'd be awesome. Yeah. But, 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 you know, I, I wish a lot of things, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you wish in one hand, piece of shit in the other hand, what's heavier, <laughs> you know? So, right. But, yeah. um, like I even, I even put it out there to chip. I said, that this would probably be a real good time to, if we did an acoustic performance together or something and mm. just, you know, but it just, it just goes on deaf ears. And, and, uh, but I did consider and possibly maybe have, you know, the drummer and the bass player from my new band um, involved in this. And, and, mm. you know, people, people are going outside and this and that. I don't have it. You don't have it. And the other guy don't have it, but we can all go in my little studio and, and do this with the backing tracks. And so you only need the three of us. And, uh, that's, that's something I'm playing with doing, but I got to I got to shit or get off the pot. I got to shake a leg and get this done yeah, and get no this definitely. going and, uh, promote it and, and things like that. And so, yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck to you. I look forward to the new song next month and, um, look forward to everything else that you do. Thanks for coming on my show. Thanks for thinking of me. All right. I appreciate it. Right. And uh, got your got your contact information. So anything I think of yeah. that, that I want to promote, I'll be calling you. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Talk to you later. Buddy. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. All right. Donnie V, always interesting stuff from him. He's really made some great music over the years. Check out his new songs, uh, All My Favorite Things, and the Enough's Enough tune, uh, Strangers in My Head, really catchy, uh, as well as his latest album, Beautiful Things. It's a brilliant album. Every song is uh, well-written and catchy. And you can follow Donnie on all social media. 
uh, I'm on there as well. If you want to follow me, if you like this episode, you can subscribe so you don't miss any more episodes. And if you have the time, you can write me a nice review on iTunes. Uh, that really helps with the algorithm and all that stuff. Um, thank you so much for your support with this show. I, I can't do it without you. So until next time, have a great day or night and uh, shoot for the moon.